Hello, let's learn about a couple different market structures here. Uh, I think it's important to think about, uh, think for yourself about what kind of the answers we might come across in our business career and uh, uh, whatever we're up to. Uh, so first question there, uh, why would it be bad if you, were in a, in a, if you were a firm in a perfectly competitive market? Okay, so think about what that means. Why do consumers like perfect competition markets? Uh, and under what conditions should a firm shut down rather than exit the market? My suggestion would be to pause the video for a second, think about what the right answers are, uh, look through your notes, refresh yourself. Uh, these, these are kind of important questions beyond the, what goes on the final. Okay, I'm back. Hopefully you paused the video and thought about what the right answers are. Uh, why would it be bad to be a perfect competitor? Uh, you have no pricing power, right? And everybody else uh, is making identical products, so you have really no ability to, to change that price and make more profit. So in the long run, you're just not going to make any profit. Why do consumers like this? Well, consumers like to get the consistent product, and they like to get a low price, right? Tends to be what happens there. Uh, under what conditions should a firm shut down rather than exit? And this is if they can't, in the short, run if they can't cover their variable costs, right? So uh, if the price is below average variable costs, that's when they should shut down, okay? So uh, that shows up and we've learned about that before. All right, so there are different forms of competition. We've learned about um, uh, perfect competition, a monopoly, and monopsony. Uh, this week we're going to learn about monopolistic competition. That's in this video and then oligopoly after that. Okay. Um, why you should care about this beyond it's going to be on the test. Uh, you're going to work in one of these likely unless you work for the government, in which case you'll have some kind of public good issue to deal with. Um, but these are essentially the five major market types that uh, firms face. And if you start your own firm, you're going to enter one of these. And if you join a big firm, you're going to be operating in one of these. If you understand what's going on in your, in your market structure, you can make better decisions and you can get paid more. So, you know, this is uh, not just a bunch of abstract concepts out of a textbook, right? So it is it is important stuff. So, you know, here's the, here's the type of problem you might have to think about, right? So you've got, um, you're making pencils, right? Pretty close to perfect competition for your firm. Uh, your boss gives you some money and you have to think about what uh, you could do to gain some pricing power, right? So you have to think about how could you differentiate your product? So here are some ideas that uh, I thought of, right? Patent some kind of uh, new device, right? Uh, pencil that, uh, I don't know, smells interesting, different colors, you know, different things. Uh, there's new colors, right? Maybe it's a different type of material, uh, some kind of new eraser. Uh, this is a sneaky one, but I could uh, try to support government regulation to keep out competition. Uh, this tends to happen. A lot of big firms will pay for... Uh, lobbying to uh, restrict and create a barrier to entry uh, into it. I, I don't really support that myself, but it is something that you could do. Uh, sign some kind of deal with a firm that's uh, that's selling something and uh, and uh, and get in there, and so then you could sell just barely over marginal cost and have one one uh, customer, right? So there's plenty of firms that just deal with Amazon or Walmart. And that's it, right? So these are different things. What you're really trying to do is get away from perfect competition and get towards this one. This one's called monopolistic competition. Uh, and uh, an example is going to be clothing, right? So let me go through the, the different features and what it means, all, all this stuff. Um, so the first one is got to be a lot of firms. So this is the co competition part. Um, they have to be selling a different or perceived different product. Okay, brand names are, are going to be important sometimes, um, but it either has to be slightly different or the consumer thinks it's slightly different. So, for example, these are all different types of shirts, and they don't look exactly the same. They might have these little uh, emblems on them, and for that reason, people are willing to pay more, right, because they think that this uh, F brand is is different than the Quicksilver brand or all the, you know, all the different brands that the brands somehow denote quality and, they, and that may be true. It may not be true too, but either way, the consumer thinks so. Uh, so this gives them some pricing power. Uh, we have low barriers to entry because somebody else could enter the market. So for example, I could enter my own, uh, enter the t-shirt market and, you know, call them like econ shirts or something, right? And you could have like a, uh, you know, an awesome slogan there and uh, put it on there, you know, and marginal revenue equals marginal benefit or something like that. I don't know. Um, I could enter the market, right? Uh, I could also exit the market. It's pretty easy to shut down your firm, right? Lots of clothing companies have gone out of business. 
um, or have sold off their their clothing to, to other firms when they're no longer able to make a profit and the uh, consumer doesn't have perfect information right so you know we don't know exactly what the marginal costs are for all these firms like we do uh, with the perfectly competitive market right and uh, an interesting experiment I've thought of is you know would consumers act differently towards the clothing that they buy if they knew the marginal cost of those clothing right if they knew that the $35 shirt only cost five dollars to make on the margin would they change their buying habits right I don't know that answer interesting uh, side study and I encourage you to, to go on and, and check it out so this is a little chart here uh, can kind of help you to think through it this week we'll learn about oligopoly but essentially uh, under a monopoly a firm that single firm has much market control not a lot of competition perfect competition is the extreme opposite no market control from the firm and lots of competitors okay let's go through some examples here which ones uh, I, I tend to find um, students uh, need to think about this a little bit about what what this looks like in the real world all right so here um, we're gonna do uh, what kind of market is this perfect competition monopolistic competition monopoly okay so first one blank DVDs the answer is perfect competition we've got an identical product uh, pretty close to the same price you could start your own firm you're gonna have to take whatever the price of uh, all of these markets are or all the other competitors are rather um, and so that's uh, that's perfect competition <laughs> next one Mexican food okay so Mexican food these are some Mexican food places in here in Tucson uh, they're all selling tacos and burritos and other types of Mexican food but they are selling at different prices and they are selling uh, uh, at different quality right or perceived different quality right? I'm not gonna say one one's better than the other or whatever but um, the consumers think so and they're willing to pay different could you enter this market sure lots of uh, Mexican food restaurants uh, open up every year uh, lots of them close down uh, this one is monopolistic competition sugar we've got an identical product we've got a selling it at the same price we've got um, uh, lots of competitors right worldwide so the sugar market is perfectly competitive okay uh, next uh, peanut butter okay so this one uh, is gonna be pretty close to perfectly competitive uh, markets here so um, and I'm, I'm sorry I misspoke there uh, monopolistically competitive right you could enter this market um, the consumer does care about quality and there is some product differentiation however how easy is it to, to succeed the problem is getting it on getting the pro your product on the shelves right so these these um, firms here have some some market power there um, that can uh, keep their products on the shelf and yours off the shelf so um, this one isn't as good of an example as monopolistic competition because it's, it's hard to get into that grocery store bananas perfect competition right same product same uh, price doesn't matter where they're from they're all going to be the same price at the grocery store they're all from different banana farms uh, easy to enter the market easy to close down haircuts these firms are selling different prices uh, different uh, uh, different quality okay and so this is monopolistic competition it's also easy to enter this market and easy to exit Pemex is the only oil company in Mexico that's a government run monopoly notebook paper identical product same price uh, perfect competition right now what is what does notebook paper do company do to try to get away from this so that they're not in perfect competition they might put you know different sets of lines here different colors maybe a little design something like this it comes in a different uh, sort of fun package or something uh, they're trying to get away from perfect competition so you'll see that uh, Tucson Electric Power this is a uh, uh, monopoly right? it's a chartered monopoly here in Tucson hotels all of these are gonna be different prices different quality you could start your own hotel right and even if we count Airbnb there are lots of people that are doing that so this is monopolistic competition okay just a couple more uh, little review things uh, what's going on at this graph so we've got marginal cost here's demand this is a perfect competitor because the demand and the marginal revenue are going to be flat right wherever the price is uh, and then the average total cost is crossing here right at the price which is profit maximization which is right here so this firm is, is breaking even 
Okay, it's going to cost them the same amount to produce as they're bringing in in revenue. This is known as a long run equilibrium uh, for other reasons that we've discussed before. This is a monopoly. We've got the downward sloping demand. We've got marginal revenue. We've got uh, profit maximization where marginal revenue and marginal cost meet. Follow that up to the, the price here. This is the price the monopolist is going to charge. This here is going to be their profit, which is above the average total cost. And uh, this is a firm that is making a profit. Now, this also includes monopolistic competition. So the monopolistic, the monopolistic competition graph is the monopoly graph. So we won't spend too much time on that because you basically know it, right? Essentially, this is like uh, the company Vans or you know some popular clothing company. They're able to price up uh, a t on top of whatever their costs are, and make those additional profits because they're they're successful and the consumer cares about what they're up to. Uh, I'll let you work through these. This is uh, just, this is again, monopolistic competition graph. How large is the profit? I think you should pause the video. It's uh, you know, just a little bit of arithmetic there and, uh, and think about what the right answer is. And then these are some questions I think you should go through uh, and think about, you know, in terms of policy, right? If you want to discuss them with another person, I think that's a great idea. So this is uh, monopolistic competition and its graph. We'll see you next time.